Tell me how you feel about social media. Whatever app you like to use, whether it's TikTok or Instagram or Facebook, I wanna know how you feel. We know that social media can hurt our mental health, but as a midlife woman, I think there are some very specific things that have definitely affected me. And in this video, I wanna share a few of them. And if I feel comfortable at the end of the video, I'm gonna share the real reason I left social media. It feels a little bit embarrassing in one way to say it, but it was because something really emotional was affecting me and I'm an emotional person and I'm not embarrassed to share who I am anymore. So I'm gonna get over that. Will I get over not making a YouTube video for the last six months? So before I get rolling, tell me what you like to watch on social media. Tell me the app that you love to be on. Pop it in the comments because YouTube hates a quitter. And not being on YouTube for six months lets YouTube know that I quit. But I didn't really. I was really just looking after my mental health. And if you're still following me here, welcome back. If you're new to me, my name is Tanya. I am a midlife woman who likes to make videos all about the things that go on in my head about aging, about midlife nutrition from a mindful perspective, and just try and bring topics that help us all age with a nice, positive mindset. So if you want to have conversations like this, I'd love you to stick around and subscribe. Now, some of you may not have had any negative impacts from social media. Some of you know that when you start to click on certain things on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, it's going to serve you up the things that you like. So if you are constantly looking at recipes, you're going to get more recipes with the same theme, plant-based, carnivore, whatever. And if you're constantly looking at home decor, you're going to get more accounts that show home decor. And if you're constantly looking at scary things, you're going to get more of that too. And I think no matter what the content that you're looking at, we all can agree that we waste a lot of time on social media. And that was one big reason why I had to get off in February and I haven't even thought about picking up my camera to film a video or popping on Instagram much until now. I was wasting so much time. If you've caught one of my last videos where I say time is running out, I'm not kidding. I really started to think about how I was spending my time as an aging woman. And was I really spending it on things that were important to me? Scrolling Instagram was becoming less and less important. I also wasn't feeling very present in my life. I was feeling like hours were short. The day wasn't long enough. And was that because I was working full time? Yes, but it was also because I was scrolling Instagram. Now caveat, I have to be on social media for my job. I'm a content creator for a wellness company. So I need to make social media posts. I need to come up with a social media strategy, but I would open up the app automatically on my own feed and whatever was there was sucking me in. I couldn't stop looking. So I needed to change those things. And I did by getting off my own account. I also noticed that I was developing the habit that my kids have, and that is numbing out on social media. Now, it really bugs me to talk about that when I watch my kids just turning to social media in social situations. They don't always, they have a little more self-awareness than that, but it's hard not to. Kids, they're in their 20s. They're not used to empty space like we are and were when we were growing up and even in our 20s. And that started to become a theme for me. My brain was used to the constant stimulation, so much so that I had trouble reading a book. Yeah, I was struggling to read a book. I couldn't pay attention. I felt agitated, whether I was sitting down to read and I thought I was in a relaxed state, or even when I was just getting off my phone to take a walk, I would stop in the park, take a moment to breathe, and I could feel like I was vibrating with stress. And I started asking myself, where did this stress come from? I thought I had worked on how I felt about myself and comparing myself to others. Nope. Another reason I got off social media was because I was experiencing a ton of comparisonitis. Now, if you've been following me right from the get-go, you may have noticed that I used to do nutrition coaching. I shut all that down too in February. Yes, because I had a really great job offer, but also because it was burning me out to try and be on social media and connect with people. This was a little different. I really enjoy making YouTube videos. They feel much more conversational and personal, even to people I watch on YouTube. But the stress of pumping out short 
form Instagram content, like eight second videos, is just burning me out. And I think I'm really good at what I do, but watching the wellness world, the younger women, the ads that come on for menopause health was really starting to get to me as well. As an aging woman whose body was changing, I thought I put all that crap to rest, but no, it was bubbling up inside me. So I knew it was time to take a break. I am confronted with the fact that I am aging and I don't look like I used to. And we do know that health and wellness does have a certain look. So I was thinking, I don't have it. Why bother? But I had to come back full circle and realize why I started all of these accounts in the first place. I'm you. You're me. We need women who look like us, who make mistakes, who gain weight, who are struggling with hair loss, hot flashes, anger, and comparisonitis to just come on here and talk about how we feel. No matter the perfectionism that exists on social media to do great reels or funny TikTok dances or make a viral meme. That was in my head in January when I started creating content on my Instagram account. And now I've let it all go. So if and when I do get back to social media or Instagram, I'm just going to be me. And part of being me is admitting to some doom scrolling that I took part in on social media for the last four years. Now, some of the things that I did read, consume, and the people that I followed, I still follow. There are certain things that I don't let get to me anymore. But one thing that was really hard was animal welfare. And I find it hard to unfollow those accounts because I really care about that from a social justice perspective and from my value system. That is something that has always been part of me. I've been overly emotional about animal abuse since I was a young girl. And there could be many reasons for why this is, but it is. I don't need to analyze it. It just is. So even the rescues that I got to know on Instagram that I would talk to in the DMs when I would see their posts, it was affecting me so, so deeply. I couldn't look anymore. I couldn't be on there. I couldn't donate. And all of that snowballed into six months of complete detox, except for the ad post or two in my stories. I do a card pull here and there. So now as I contemplate coming back on social media, that is the one thing I haven't exactly figured out how I'm going to navigate apart from unfollowing. And that seems kind of rude. But it's not rude. Many people have unfollowed me because you know what? We lose interest or we find that the accounts we follow are bothering our mental health. So as I come back here on YouTube and as I contemplate coming back on social media, I'm thinking about the kind of content that I want to share. And a lot of it is going to be the same. Open conversations about midlife, food, and just how it is to age in this society. But I'm also going to talk more about my mindset as I age, the things that I'm thinking about, and I want to do it in a way that is relatable and authentic and telling you about my animals and emotions. Well, that's authentic. I think we need more of this on the internet. And while I love to look at perfect kitchens and really well filmed recipes and snapshots on social media, I also love to follow the women who are showing up no matter what their hair looks like, whether they have makeup on or not, and being who they are. Because this is the age to dive into who you are and finally accept yourself. We all need to accept ourselves. If you've not caught my video that time is running out, well, it is. We have a longer road behind us than we do ahead of us. And no, it's not meant to be morbid. It's meant to be realistic. So if you spend a lot of time on social media, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to stay there? Do you find it fulfilling? Hey, and if you do, no judgment. But if you're leaving this video thinking, hmm, I might need to do a little 30 day detox, I'd love to hear it and let me know after your 30 days how it goes. Do you feel like a different person going on social media? I certainly do. Thank you for chatting with me today and I'll see you in the next video.